Did you know that there is a way to get ahead of 99% of all writers? But how do you do it? How do you boost your productivity so that you can be one of the top 1% when it comes to writing? Welcome to A Year of Writing, a podcast about writing, productivity and marketing. My name is Natalie and I am your host. Somewhere between 60 and 80% of all people say that they want to write a book someday, but most people won't even finish their first draft. Why is that? Why is it so hard to, you know, go from talking about writing to actually finishing something? Well, to be honest, writing a book is really hard, so I feel you there. I always wanted to be a writer, but it took me years to realize that I needed to have a consistent writing routine to be able to produce and publish constantly. I never thought about the fact that you know, writing routine and writing schedule has so much to do with the fact that you actually, you know, progress and become a better writer. And uh, since I started this writing routine, I have been writing for more than 250 days in a row, which means that I have a few learnings to share with you guys. How do you get into the top 1% that write and publish constantly? Well, tip number one is to start small. Start with a novella, a short story, or maybe just, you know, one book. Don't try to write The Wheel of Times or, you know, some big epic series. Because in the beginning, it's very important that you have a small goal that is achievable. If you take on a smaller challenge, you're more likely to succeed. Number two is uh, boosting and finding your creative energy. When is the best time for you to write? For me, I am a morning person and I'm much more both creative and focused in the mornings. So I prefer writing in the mornings. And I also know that if I, uh, you know, do some of the morning routines that I have, like meditation and exercise, I will be a better writer. I will be a lot more focused and stuff like that. And you have to figure out how you can boost your creative energy. I know some people that... uh, that prefer writing in uh, coffee shops to feel more creative. While others, you know, if you don't know how to boost your creative energy, then try different things and, you know, see how it goes. And also another tip is of course, to read uh, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. That book really, really helped me to find my, some of my creative energy, but also to find to get out of a creative blockage, basically. And number three, day job versus writing. I know this one is uh, a big question for a lot of us. And like, how do you balance your day job versus your writing? Um, And I mean, if you have the opportunity to work 80% instead of 100, that is awesome. Then you can take the rest, you know, the 20% and actually take that as writing time. But otherwise, I recommend trying to schedule writing time into your daily schedule. I did this, I use, I still do actually, I block uh, a space of time when I'm, you know, when I'm writing each morning since I'm a morning person. And this actually helps me to stay consistent in my writing routine. It also helps me to, you know, prioritize and if I have some kind of meeting or whatever uh, during the time when I'm supposed to be writing, then I'll just move the writing slot until later that day or see where it fits. Um, and for some people that has really hectic schedules or, you know, that don't know where to fit this, it's okay. It doesn't have to be like four hours of writing. This is something that a lot of people make the mistake. They think that they need an entire day to be able to just focus and write. That's not true. If you only have three minutes before a meeting, write on your phone. If you have 10 minutes during your lunch break, write on your phone or on your computer. It's better to just write something than to not write at all. But trying to fit it into your schedule will help you to write more consistently and, uh, you know, prioritize writing. And number four, if you write a thousand words per day, This means that you will finish a novel. Let's say that you want to write a feel-good novel and maybe it's supposed to be 75,000 words. If you're able to write a thousand words a day, that means that you will have a first draft finished in under three months. That's amazing. And 
how do you make sure that you're able to write a thousand words per day? Well, first of all, track your progress. This might seem, I don't know, some people don't like tracking stuff, but I love it because going back and looking at how much I've written, it actually makes me realize that I've written a lot more than I thought I did. Um, and it also helps me keep track of like how much time do I need to to write a thousand words and can I, you know, can I write faster or, you know, how, what time, yeah, I can also see in, in my tracking um, sheet that I have, I write down which project I'm writing on, what time I start writing, uh, what date it is, of course, uh, how long I'm writing for uh, and how many words I've written. Because I want to also be able to see, you know, how many words per hour I write and uh, and if there's something special happening that day, maybe I slept very badly or stuff like that, then I'll actually write it as a comment so so that I know that there was something odd with that day if the numbers does not add up to my usual writing speed or whatever. And also if you write a thousand words per day, make sure, you know, have fun with your writing. Because if you say, if you promise yourself that you're going to write, say, a word goal, um, then it doesn't have to be perfect. Like the writing, it's not supposed to be perfect, it's supposed to be first draft. And that's like, you know, first drafts are just rough diamonds with a lot of dirt on that you need to edit to make them shine. You need to do a lot of work afterwards, but if you have a thousand words, then it's a lot easier. And by writing a thousand words a day, you will also develop the knowledge that has to do with story structure, storytelling, uh, how to write dialogue and stuff like that, because you will be writing so much that afterwards when you go back and edit, you will see in which areas that you need to improve and for me, this has really helped a lot because then I've been able to, you know, learn more and read up on those specific areas to improve my writing. And writing consistently helps you avoid writer's block. I mean, I've been writing, as I said, consistently for 250 days. No writer's block at all. And tip number five to be able to become one of the top percent of all writers is to have a growth mindset. With growth mindset, I mean that if you have the time and the opportunity, try different things, experiment with your writing technique. Maybe, you know, maybe writing on a computer is not for you. Maybe you're supposed to do your first draft by hand or maybe even, you know, talking into your phone. You don't have to write the way, you know, the way you, that you think you're supposed to write. Find your the way that you work and uh, and grow from there. And also experiment a little bit. You know, try famous authors' writing routines or uh, you know challenge a friend on social media or whatever you do. And also try writing in different places. Maybe you write better at a cafe or in the library, or maybe you prefer writing at home. But if you don't try the different writing in different places, you will never know where you're the most efficient. And having a growth mindset also means welcoming new challenges that comes with being a writer and meeting them head on, not being afraid. Because growth mindset also has to do with not being afraid of failure, because failure is just, you know, you just learn that that technique did not work for you, so you try another one and you grow with it. It's awesome. So to conclude this episode, if I knew what I know now when I started my writing journey, I would probably have published a lot more books by now. But I am very thankful for knowing this now and I'm thankful for having a writer's writing routine that fits, you know, my writing style and my needs. And I hope that you can find a writing routine that suits you. And, you know, writing consistently, having a growth mindset has really revolutionized the way that I yeah, my writing career, and I hope it does for you too. And if you like, want me to talk about anything specific in the upcoming episodes, let me know in the comments. There are not that many episodes left of season one of A Year of Writing, but season two is coming at the beginning of 2024. So yeah, I look forward to that. Um, 
that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you soon.